Welcome everyone to the CU Athletic Fields here in Boulder, Colorado for the RMWLL Championship between the number one seeded Utah Utes and the number three seeded Colorado Buffaloes. Welcome into this broadcast here on Scobo Sports. I'm Alex Roberts and I'm joined by Nick Evans as we're underway in the first minute of this one between the Buffs and the Utes. Yeah, Alex, we were in Australia for a little bit there. We were uh, upside down on the camera. I don't, I couldn't tell you how that happened, but no, you, as you said, it's a beautiful day out. We are very lucky to have this giant cloud over us because it gets very hot here, I found out, <laughs> when the sun's out. So it's going to be a great game today. Well, the sun, it gets hot out here because we are physically close to the sun. We are over a mile above sea level, which the sun will have much more of a visible effect. It, yeah. uh, putting that into effect. <laughs> yeah, and we just saw a great game before this, and that one strapped up a little bit ago. And this one's also going to be a huge one. We got a championship going for the Utes and the Buffaloes. Well, this is a big one. Uh, we just finished watching the Constellation game that took place, started at 10 p.m., 10 a.m., not 10 p.m., uh, 10 a.m. BYU, who was de defeated by Utah by four goals yesterday, took on Utah, Utah Valley, who was defeated by Colorado by three goals yesterday, and it was a really close one. U BYU led 8-3 at the half. Utah Valley tried to fight back, but U BYU held on 9-8 the final score with the Cougars getting the win over the Wolverines. That game wrapped up not even about, just about 10 minutes ago at this point. So we'll see what these two teams have in stores. The first eight meter shot of the day is upon us. Just decides to fake the shot there. That was a good stick lift there too. I, I didn't see which Colorado defender that was, but really good job to just intervene in that. And if you try to get fancy with it, someone's gonna crowd you and uh, stop you, so. You got to learn with these Buffaloes that you can't you can't play around in that eight meter shot. You just have to get it on that. The ball bounces off Grada's stick. It's picked up by Alexandra McCarvel now, but she can't grab it. Maintain control now. Both McCarvel and Lindsey Rogers for Utah take a tumble to the turf. Yeah, you're gonna find very early here. This is a very passionate game and. We saw with that BYU game, you know, that was a consolation game and they were going all out. So emotions are going to be high here for the fans and the players. And you're going to see a very physical, maybe undisciplined game here today. It's an advantage for Utah after a penalty called against the Buffaloes. It'll be a one minute advantage. And it looks like they'll stop the clock again here. Another penalty coming up. We'll talk about a golden opportunity for Utah right now. So they got a two-man advantage here. For a f pretty much a full minute, and this is a crucial moment early in this game with the game tied with no score is a great chance for the number one seed to get off and running. Yeah, this is a great opportunity though to also see how uh, the Buffaloes respond with their space and see how they can play with that disadvantage. And it looks like a shooting space going to be called. And so a 12 meter on the way, or an 8 meter on the way, pardon me. Naya Allen We'll take the shot, yeah. and she scores. Yeah. Nothing to it. Once you get that, just shoot. That's exactly what they needed to get right there with that advantage. I mean, they kind of had control of that the entire way, and the Buffaloes, even though they were at a disadvantage, there was a crucial spot right there for the Utes, and it was just poured on and find themselves up early here. They will still have an advantage, it looks like, since it was a two-man advantage for Utah. I think they will still have an advantage. No, both will come both out because there's a green card. The advantage is over, but Utah capitalizes. It's a quick one nothing lead. Yeah, and I mean, Utah, they don't really need you know, that advantage to you know, kind of control the place of the game. So as you see right there, great takeaway, and this is going to be a team that's going to be a dogfight all night. So Utah will retain possession after a foul committed by Colorado. Lila Sage gets... Possession and hands off to McKenna Minock. Here's Allen. Along the far side, now trying to move in, shooting one, and it missed the net. 
Ball will stay with Utah though. Here's Sage to the near side for Grace to Grief. And behind the buff net. Here's a shot and a nice save by the CU goaltender, Anna Klein. Yeah, Klein's been very fun to watch. And in the couple games that we've been able to see her, she's done very well at challenging the shooter. And if you get her, it's going to be on those one on ones or on those passes. But otherwise, she does a great job controlling her own lane and made the easy stop right there. If you, in, if you include the game that they played yesterday against Utah Valley, this is just the fourth game this season they've played in Boulder. They played at Kittredge Field against CSU, defeated them on a rescheduled game played on this, on this field against the, against the University of Denver, and then the Utah Valley game yesterday. So it's just the fourth game that they play in Boulder this season. They played their, all three Utah teams, the other three teams that are in this tournament, Utah, BYU, and Utah Valley, all on the road in one weekend, so huge game that they get at home this time around. Yeah, and what a freezing day that was in the DU game, so opposite side of elements here, and as long as that sun stays out, I mean, you know, there's really no excuse for the conditions here. I will here not complain for... about the cloud coverage, though. It's really nice out here today. Absolutely. Here's Grotta. Passes to Gaylord. Back up to Ava Logan. Logan looking for a shot. Decides to pull away. Now it's around the 12 meter mark. Passes over to Rogan Bauer. On the far side in the corner. Colorado trying to draw up some scoring opportunity. They send it behind the net to Grotta. Yeah, Grotta so looking for a centering pass right now. It's almost like they were playing Pac-Man where that game when you were in a elementary school where you had to stay on the lines. And right now they're all spaced apart on that 10 meter shot line. So you can see they're trying to get something up from a distance and kind of creep closer as they uh, let it go right there. Here's Alexandra Langwin. She's got a lot of room. Langwin passes across to Minock. Minock back to Langwin. To Grief on the far side. Sends it up to Allen. Allen makes a move. Allen walks right in. And while the shot was stopped, there is going to be a penalty call. It looks like another eight meter shot for Naya Allen. Allen at the eight meter mark, right in on Klein, and she missed the net. It's gonna go out of bounds, ball will stay with Utah. Lucky break for Colorado there. They really need to just get this going. And we, we saw a little bit of control there in that possession, but they immediately let it go and just need to be careful, especially in transition against this Utah team. Here's Lila Sage. Lines a pass to Hillary Kurd. Kurd, lines a pass. Langwin thought about shooting and up passing it away. And CU will be called for a penalty. And an eight meter shot coming up for Grace to Grief. To Grief, right in on Klein, cannot get the shot off. And I think a second chance coming up for DeGrief. Another eight meter shot. Yeah, it's really hard to play that space right there. And sometimes you're gonna get, you know, you're trying to get the right stick work and you let out the penalty here. DeGrief, right in on Klein, missed the net. But Utah will keep possession here. DeGrief. Just had two eight meter shots. Flips it back to sit to Allen. Allen pressured. Ball on the ground. Still a fight for it. And see you trying to scoop it up. And they will take possession. Yes, you get some really great pressure right now from the Buffaloes. I mean, they do that a lot where they're very, very efficient at forcing uncomfortable looks. And when you pair that with a goaltender who's very good at challenging the shooter on her own, you're gonna have a hard time just getting uh, great passes and looks. Penelope Riley will begin play for Colorado. Klein will take possession looking for a pass to start the offensive rush. Klein finds a pass to Madeline Mancini. 
Finds Collar along the sideline. Collar now racing upfield. Looks like they'll stop the clock here. Looks like a penalty coming up. Yeah, some miscommunication there with the Buffaloes, and they need to regroup now, but they need to be careful about their spacing and make sure that they get their opportunity because you're already down, and even if it's a high-scoring game, it's positions like this that are going to matter the most in the long run. So a two-minute penalty assessed against Utah. The Buffs will have an advantage up until about the 4.30 mark. Margaret Collar to start play for the Buffs. Finds Megan Lorenzen, who rushes past the 50-yard line here on the CU football practice field during the fall. As Grotta finds a pass back. Gaylord trying to tuck that by the Utah goalie, Olivia Lowe. So it looks like an eight-meter shot coming up for Gaylord. Opportunity for the Buffs to tie the game. First eight-meter shot of the afternoon for Colorado. Gaylord just shoots one, and it goes over the net. Try to have that one bounce by low. Buffs will keep possession here. Grotta. Looking for a pass, finds a pass to Logan. Logan backs off, finds Grotta, fakes a shot, and now a shooting space can be called against Utah. Grotta's gonna get an eight meter. Grotta, right in, fakes a shot, and just missed the net. Went high with it. See, you will keep possession. It's Annika Ditzler right now. Back to Grotta. Lindsey Grotta. Front Gaylord fakes a shot. Trying to pass in front. Good play by the Utah D to clear it away. Yeah, Lowe finds a pass to Grace Mazalewski. Mazalewski yeah. still has it, trying to clear it away. Ball bouncing at midfield. Grotta trying to pick up the ground ball and does keep his possession for Colorado. Yeah, I mean, really good transition there for the use to just isolate and contain, but tried to go a little bit too hard, and now Colorado finds themselves with the ball. So the advantage is over for the Utes and or for the Buffaloes, excuse me, but Colorado's gotta be a little bit happy with how they managed it, even if they couldn't get the goal. And it looks like Ava Logan will now get a, an eight meter for the Buffaloes. Plenty of eight meter chances here. Not a lot of conversions on both sides. Yeah, no shortage of chances here, but it's about converting it that's gonna matter. Logan, right in, and a big stop by low. Exactly what we need to know, do though. I mean, this is a very mobile goal, uh, goalie, but if you're able to just pilot like that and get a very quick snap and. Ball still rolling on the ground. Allen cannot scoop it up there. See you trying to take possession, and Allen's going to finally get gra grab the ball for the Utes. Very lucky break for the Buffaloes right there with that stoppage. I mean, they're almost caught with a couple of their players off, so. Going to be a very lucky break to get that stoppage, and looks like uh, Utah will go to the advantage. But otherwise, I mean, that was a great breakaway opportunity right there for the youth. So even with the advantage, they got to be uh, quicker on that transition. So an advantage for Utah. I'm feeling Trying to take a two nothing lead. Might have a uh, rain coming. Ah, it looks like a little bit. There's, it's pretty, this is the biggest cloud I see in the entire radius, so I expect it to uh, get back, we get back to the sun here. Eh, maybe around halftime, but even before that could be. But CU has possession. There is a whistle, and Utah will take possession back. Buffs will turn it over on a non possess The ball carry does not commit the foul. Yeah, you're really seeing those scraps on the, uh, uh, the sidelines right now, so... You know, that's where you kind of get undisciplined and a little bit de desperate to keep the possession. And that's how you end up with turnovers like that. 
And get that pass up to Lila Sage. Sage, pass in front to Grief, looking for a shot. Ball knocked down. Here's a shot that was sailing over the net. And meanwhile, the advantage has just been killed by Colorado. And they kind of got, they got off unscathed there. I mean, not a lot of opportunities for the youth, and they were kind of caught in transition for most of that, even though they find themselves in the offensive zone. Sage, they're gonna work it around, play some hot potato here. To Grief, over to Hillary Curd. Fake a shot, has to back away. Minock fakes the shot, two minutes to go here on the first quarter. Allen, passes over. To Grief, that's not to Grief, that's Minock. Now it looks like another penalty gonna be called. And then Utah's gonna go back to the advantage. Yeah, under two minutes here. So for the for Colorado, it's just gonna be about getting out of this quarter with the, uh, with the advantage on skate and Try not to let up anything dangerous here. Well, they got a dangerous chance coming up, an eight meter shot. And Klein able to force it away. Utah will keep possession here. That beautiful job swarming the attacker. And that's the thing about Colorado is you need to be quick, you need to be snappy, you know? And there's some goalies where it works trying to maybe dance around and get that easy shot off, but you see how quickly that they get those uh, that they get those defenders and kind of isolate the attacker. Well, uh, they reverse the call. CU will get possession. Anna Klein looking for a pass. Still trying to find an open player. Klein still has it. Has to get it away. CU's trying to play deep here, but you, you really can't right now with the, how good Utah's playing. He's got to so. find someone that's open. And there's a hit off. Klein hit. And they're going to stop the clock here. Yeah, so Klein With lost 57 possession. seconds. Klein lost possession, and you had one of the Utah uh, attackers, of course, trying to capitalize on that, but got contact in the meantime, so looks like that'll be a turnover f uh, in CU's favor. Well, I, and, the, and the referees will get together and discuss the call here. They've been very active so far today. Yes, uh, and, and and I think that's one thing I've noticed with the cross. Mm -hmm. After you know, it's only been a couple about a year that I've covered both these teams. I've noticed that it, it all depends by on crew by crew how many penalties are called, how many, how much, how active they are, and these 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 officials do seem very active. We've seen a lot of penalties called here in this first quarter. Yeah, and it's kind of a strange situation. I mean, you have Colorado who's playing very far downfield trying to get an easy break going, but Utah swarmed them, and the goalie had no choice, drops the ball, and she was kind of forced off the ball, you know, trying to capitalize on that and. They might assess the lane for maybe a check in the back. And yeah, regardless, that'll be CU's possession. Here's Lorenzen. Just moving it upfield for the buffs. Not concerned about passing at the moment. Lorenzen now thinks about it as the buffs are in the offensive zone. Here's Lou shooting one right to the net of about, Olivia Lowe. How about a breakaway? I mean, you expect the CU team, you know, very good at passing. And they don't use the legs too much to start transitions, but... How about that for taking the full 80 yards and made a good shot and you can't be disappointed about that even if they didn't score. Pass up to Mazalewski. Mazalewski to pass there to Allen. Allen looking for a shot. Ball knocked out of her stick. Scooped up by Mazalewski. Final 10 seconds. Buffs will hold to end the first quarter. And just like that, it is just one nothing at the end of the first. Several advantages for both sides. Several eight meter shots for both sides. And yet, only one goal. Defense is playing great so far to start today. Yeah, and that's the number one team in the conference too to add to that. So the fact that you only let up one goal is a pretty good testament to their defense. But just need to get the offense generation going. I mean. They've had no shortage of chances with those eight meter looks and 
you know, a couple of breakaway opportunities. So it's really going to be about how they attack and finish it. You know, not because they've been doing very good in the production, but that doesn't mean anything if you can't get in the uh, in the goal column. Well, we're going to take a quick break here as we take a break in between periods. Utah leads Colorado one nothing. You're listening to Scope Up Sports. We'll be right back. And welcome back to the CU Athletic Fields for the second quarter between the Colorado Buffaloes and the Utah Utes. Score at the end of the first, one nothing Utah. Yeah, great defensive performance so far for the Buffs, and even better for the Utes though to you know force no goals through the first. And but this looks like a very even matchup. I mean, you know th this Utah squad is very dangerous, but so is the CU squad. So you know with the time that we've seen them play. They just need to get into their rhythm and know what they're good at. And right now it's been their passing game. Colorado's been doing very good on the breakaway doing that. Just 13 seconds on the advantage for Utah. See, you will get possession. It looks like they're going to kill this advantage. So back to even strength with Colorado in possession. Alexandra McCarvel has possession. Pass it up top. Haley Rhymes. Rhymes wearing number nine for the Buffs. Down towards Grotta and taken away by the Utah goaltender, Olivia Lowe. Jada Johnson has it for Utah. Across midfield. And gets a pass. They set up their offense now. Lengwin goes to the far side for Kurd. Mason Carey. Still has possession. Carey looking for a centering pass. No rush for Carey here. And you don't really need to. I mean, this is a team that likes to, you know, not not flood, but just kind of wait for their good shot. So, and you know, it's, it's worked for them so far getting that goal. So they're gonna wanna they're gonna wanna play on their own terms when they're on offense. Carey still has possession, and she finally relinquishes possession, getting it over to Hillary Curd. Now Naya Allen, guarded there by Luce. Allen, shoved off, pass off to Mark, Minock trips up, Buff scoop it up, Madeline Cloud, 
Finds the pass to Megan Lorenzen. And they get it up to Chase Kreibel as the Buffs regain possession. Rhymes. Moving into the offensive zone. Slow things down, finds McCarville along the far side. Gwendolyn Gaylord down there, trying that centering pass, looking for Kreibel, it's still on the ground. Loose picks it up, still on the ground. McCarville trying to take possession. There's a whack from Allen. McCarville will be able to cleanly grab possession. Now in front to Grotta, fakes a shot. Grotta looking for a pass now, finds Rhymes. Kreibel up top, finds Loose. They go to the near side with Gwendolyn Gaylord. Haley Rhymes fakes a pass, tries to make a spin move around the defender. Just hands it off to Kreibel. Kreibel moving through, thought about shooting. Now backed off. Good defense here from Utah right now. Rhymes gives to loose. Yeah, you mentioned that defense. They're doing a really good job at just disrupting CU's uh, tempo. I mean, CU wants to go fast, and then they want to slow things down, but they, they just can't. So, you know, Utah's just doing a very good job for just making sure that they're off balance when it comes to communication and getting those looks. Grotta has possession. Finds a pass to Kreibel. Kreibel trying to move through the D. Lob pass into Grotta, and she scores! CU has tied the game. Lindsey Grotta gets the tally, and we're tied at one. I mean, who else? We've been hearing Grotta's name all day, and, you know, very good and very efficient finisher. So she's been the ones getting the good looks, and, you know, Gambler's fallacy. You got to think at least one of them is going to fall, and. <laughs> We've got ourselves a game. That's Grotta's 14th goal of the season. And it's a big one. His goals have been hard to come by here in the first half. Just the second goal of the game. Yeah, we've got a hockey score, not really a lacrosse score. So, I mean, it's just a really good testament, you know, the defense and more importantly, the goaltending here. So, it's always nice seeing the tale of two different goaltenders do very good in their own respect. So, only letting up one goal so far through... However many minutes. Uh, about 19 minutes. Yeah, about 19 minutes. and I don't expect too many more to fall here today. Polar opposite to their matchup when they played in Utah a couple of weeks ago, about a month ago at this point now, where CU being the only team to beat this Utah team in conference, winning that contest 15 to 14. Langwin to the far side. They'll go behind the net. Mason Carey. Passes near side to Langwin. Here's Allen. Shooting one. Bounce shot hops over the net. Utah will stay in control. Yeah, if you notice here, uh, the Buffaloes have been very passive with their sticks, and that is great for you know, using the body and staying out of the uh, penalty uh, tick, but that, you know, of course, you're going to be letting up goals like, or shots like that where you're not using the stick enough, but at some point, it's whether you value shots on net or staying out of the box. Curd finds Allen. Allen has the Utes lone goal, finds a pass to Lila Sage. Sage shoots one, and it's deflected off the stick of Anna Klein. I think the butt of the stick, so really good coordination right there, and good job assisting her team to uh, to get that possession back. They stopped the clock for a short minute. Ball got stuck in the uh, grass, I think, as they get a new ball. There's a pass disruption by the Buffs defense, and they're able to take it away. It's Delaney Conjoyan, looking for a pass, able to get it up to Ava Diamond. Yeah, two Utes just colli uh, collided there, so now CU finds themselves getting that easy transition and gonna see how they capitalize on having possession now. And stop the clock again, looks like a penalty coming up against Utah.
their second of the game uh, today. So, you know, Utah so far has been winning the possession, or excuse me, the penalty battle. And, of course, it's going to be about who can uh, capitalize on those uh, penalties, of course. So Buffs begin their advantage. Conjoin. Lines a pass. Tan Holstein. Grotta pass in front. Logan scores! It's Ava Logan. And the Buffs have their first lead of this championship game. We talked about capitalizing. How about that? Wasted no time when they had possession there in their own zone and went around and found the, uh, found the open person. So a little bit of a breakdown from the Utes, but, you know, of course, being at that disadvantage, it's kind of hard to, you know, use the space in right. And when you get that, you get a really comfortable look from Colorado, and they're going to find the back of the net if you keep allowing those kind of shots. That's Logan's 10th goal of the year. And it's an important one, giving the Buffs their first lead of the afternoon. Utah playing from behind for the first time this afternoon. Haley Rhymes trying to take possession. It's grabbed there by Sage. Sage off the draw. Backs up and begins an offensive possession. Here's Allen on the near side. Back up to Sage. Finds a pass to Megan Generazzo. Sage, again. And she loses control of the ball. Kreibel picks it up for Colorado. Kreibel now moving up with a lot of space. Kreibel, shoved off, able to protect the ball. And a sh shooting space called, it looks like it's gonna be an eight meter coming up for Evan McDonald. McDonald trying to build on the lead. And she scores! And just like that, it's 3-1 Colorado. Evan McDonald gets the first eight meter goal of the day for CU. Yeah, they found out what they wanted to do. I mean, they've tried different kinds of uh, eight meter shots. You know, they tried to maybe go around and maybe do a little fake out and sometimes just get you know a little bit creative with it, but they found right there. Just get it on the net as soon as that whistle blows. And for a formidable goaltender, you know, I, I wouldn't expect to see that kind of shot get passed, but you know, not every or no goalkeeper is invincible. McDonald, her fourth goal of the year. And it gives the Buffs their first multi-goal lead and the first multi-goal lead for either team this afternoon. Approaching the halfway point of the second quarter. As Utah controls off the draw. Long pass off the mark. It's going to roll towards out of bounds. And CU will take control. Yeah, a little bit of a concession there from the Utes. They you know, realize that, that there's no point in trying to restart that one. So it's about getting your looks here and transition and maybe forcing that turnover. This is Megan Lorenzen racing up the sideline. And now they're going to stop play here. Penalty coming up. Slash. Yes, yeah, so they need a slashing call. In subsequent two minutes called for the Utes. But yeah, <laughs> racing down the sidelines. Where we've seen the majority of these penalties being taken when they're trying to break out on the sidelines. Kreibel has chased down on the sideline. It's going to go out of bounds and Utah will take possession. Racing up the sideline now for Utah. Now she wants to take it out Johnson. Herself. Johnson. Gets across midfield, now slows things down for Utah. 
Gets a pass over there for Generazzo. Here's Sage. Now the far side. Generazzo again over to Sage. Ball jarred loose, but she will take possession once more after a foul committed by Colorado. Sage loses possession. And, well, another foul committed by Colorado. She will stay in control. Yeah, bumped him off the ball there. You can tell that they're, you know, they're trying to get that one-on-one -on -one, uh, takeaway, but <laughs> they got called twice now, and that just gives Utah time to reset and try to start another scoring chance. Lenguin. Passing. Picked off. A leaping grab by Margaret Collar. Wins possession back for the Buffaloes. Collar. Looking to release possession. Now guarded by two Utes. And she will take possession once more. The advantage for Colorado down to 15 seconds as Megan Lorenzen now has possession. Lorenzen up to Rhymes. Rhymes moving right in, hit off the ball, and it's going to be a foul, and it looks like they're going to stop the clock. Yeah, a bit of a hard bump right there, but these defense uh, defenders for Colorado are doing a really good job just getting those tape measure passes, and you saw a beautiful rainbow pass right there to get that going, but it's, we haven't talked about it enough, but these defenders doing a really good job at just getting that ball downfield. Well, it's an eight-meter shot and another penalty. Rhymes with an 8-meter shot, 12-meter shot for Rhymes to start the advantage for Colorado. Walks right in, a bounce shot over the net. Kept in possession by Colorado, loose, looking for a shot. Grata scooping up the ground ball, keeping possession for Colorado. Kreibel now has possession up top. Finds Rhymes again. Loose. Around the Pac-12 logo on the near side. Diamond behind the net for Grata. Lindsey Grata looking for a centering pass. Thinks about it, now finds Rhymes. Rhymes right in and she scores! I mean, no doubt about that goal. You, you saw how comfortable she was getting that look and followed right through with it. She was prepared if that was a rebound, so really, really heads up play right there. And, Utah just kind of forces uncomfortable looks because. And Utah will take a timeout as the Buffs in control right now with a 4 1 lead. Yeah, Colorado, very accurate, very precise shooters. So for Utah, it's just about swarming and overwhelming these attackers because if you let Colorado get a good look, they're going to put it right where they need to and get those, get those balls in the back of the net. So they have a three goal lead and they've scored the last four goals in this game. Grotta has one, Logan has one, McDonald has one, and Haley Rhymes just scoring the most recent goal now with a now tied back up with Lindsey Grotta in the scoring metric with 14 goals. Yeah, and it's been a bit of a turnaround for this Buffalo team. I mean, didn't have any goal in the first quarter, and then you know it was a low-scoring game to start, and now a three-goal lead, which with, with the tone of this game, that feels like a lot, in, you know, in a game like lacrosse. So. Going to be interesting to see how they preserve it, and maybe they try to get some uh, cushion goals of their own before this half. So a much-needed uh, much timeout for Utah. It's their first of the half. They still have another one to use with 4.30 to go here in this first half. It's a very, very important uh, scenario now. As the sun's starting to come back out just for a moment, clouds are going to start rolling back in here. Well, this is kind of more what we expected today in terms of the weather was not expecting this big cloud to kind of just hover over the field here for a good couple hours. Yeah, and you can tell how you know players play different there where they're kind of playing a hot potato. No one wants to run the full 80 yards in the heat, so they want to you know stretch those passes and that kind of thing. But you know when those clouds are there, you know you're going to see a lot more mobility, and that's where we're kind of seeing those penalties in that transition, especially along the sidelines. So. 
<laughs> when the sun comes out, definitely expect them to be using that passes more, and maybe the penalties start falling if that sun comes back out. Both teams break the huddle. It's a 4-1 lead for Colorado. Four and a half minutes to go here in this first half. CU capitalizes on back-to-back -back, uh, two-minute advantages. I mean, literally, the second that Utah is able to kill the first one, they take another penalty, uh, and Colorado is able to capitalize that time around. Yeah, and that's kind of been the story all day. The difference is Colorado wasn't capitalized on these penalties or eight, ten-meter shots, so Utah was just kind of lucky that Colorado wasn't capitalizing, but now they are, and you know you can kind of see that score difference because of it. See you will win control off the draw. Ava Logan over to McDonald. Both goal scores so far today for Colorado. Penelope Riley has it. Passes across to Conjoyan. Ava Diamond behind the net. It's just slowing things down for the Buffs here as they're in control. That's another thing that they've really taken away from this Utah defense. They were doing really good at making Colorado kind of feel uncomfortable with the pace that they were at. When they tried to play slow and, you know, wait for a shot, Utah kind of disrupted them and made them go quicker and vice versa. So Colorado's back in control of the tempo, and now they're getting more comfortable looks because of it. Ava Diamond has it on the near side, has it stripped from her stick. Grotta able to scoop up the ground ball and keep possession for the Buffaloes. Grotta. Back to Diamond in the corner. Diamond. Pass to Logan. Goes back down to Diamond. Just switches places with Lindsey Grotta. Grotta finds Diamond. She pivots in front, looking for Riley. She can't cleanly handle the ball, and low scoops it up. Low looking for a outlet pass here. You got grace. You have grace. Low being chased around there by Grotta, just hands it off there. Mazaluski. Cross midfield. Looking for a pass. Mazaluski will give to Langwin. Langwin. Hit off the ball and Foul committed by Colorado. Lenguin will have an eight meter shot. It's been a while since Utah has got those, so Colorado for the most part is doing pretty good so far for stopping them and just need to worry about this one. Shoots right out there and Anna Klein able to make the stop. Approaching the two minute mark here in this first half. Klein, the lead pass, bounces up over Conjoyan and picked up there by Jada Johnson. Johnson has it for Utah. Finds a pass to Amelia Santelli. Santelli loses the ball. It's still loose on the ground. And now a foul committed by Utah. By Colorado, I'll stop the clock. Pleading their case. It's going to be a penalty. Yeah, that's been the story here for Utah so far, but. You know, if they figure out the discipline game, you know, this team is very evenly matched against the Buffs, and of course you see that seed. They're number one for a reason, so they just need to find their rhythm in the discipline category, and they'll get a lot more looks if they can keep that, keep out of the box, I mean. So see you back to the advantage. Here's Lorenzen. Finds a pass up to McCarville. McCarville on the near side. Back out to Logan. On the pass to Ditzler. Shoots one, scores! It's Annika Ditzler, who gives Colorado a four goal lead. It's 5-1. Yeah, that caught me off guard. I think that caught everybody off guard. She kind of did the, uh, like the Matt Stafford no look right there. You, you know, the body language was saying, you know, get open because I'm going to pass to you. And he said, you know what? I'm just going to put it on net. And 
you know, goalie definitely didn't expect it. I didn't expect it. I was looking for her passing options. So, <laughs> really good fake out right there to uh, deceive the pass. And <laughs> uh, not a lot of goalies can expect that. And when your defense is kind of allowing those easy passes, you really can't blame her for letting that go. Just under a minute and a half to go in the first half, and the Buffs have scored the last five goals, all coming in this second quarter. Off the draw, it's controlled by Utah. As the clouds cover the CU Athletic Fields once again after a short appearance from Mr. Sun. Johnson flips it to the far side. Now down low behind the CU net. One minute to go. Carey on the near side. Carey flips it. Carey has possession once again after some good defense prevents Utah from a wraparound attempt. Here's Allen moving around Lorenzo. Now shoots one. It bounces off of Klein. I don't think she knew where it was, but it, she deflected it away. No problem. 30 seconds! Langwin. Down to Carey. Carey in front, looking for Johnson. Ball's loose. Johnson yeah, still has it. Really need to hurry up here. You're looking at 20 seconds and counting. And loose. Allen has the ball scooped and stolen away. Lorenzen just going to hold the ball away from Utah. Final five seconds. And Cloud will hold to end the first half. as a loud buzzer. Yeah. That's a loud buzzer. Very shrill, too. It's a really high pitch. Yeah, your, your ears are going to ring you. <laughs> you get too close to it. Cloud holds on to end the first half, and the Buffs go on a 5-0 run to end the first half, scoring all five goals in the second quarter. And they lead at the end of the first half. Two, or not two, five to one. What's been the key to their success, Nick? The penalties, you know, it, Utah in both quarters really were getting those penalties against them, but Colorado wasn't doing anything about them. They would get the eight meter shot and kind of whiff on it. So they would also get advantages and then, you know, go out empty handed with them, but they figured it out and Utah kept getting those penalties against them. So Utah didn't really change anything with their discipline, but CU started to recognize it and kind of capitalize on that more. So Utah, you know, just needs to stay out of those, you know, out of those turnovers out of those penalty looks, out of the shots. And uh, yeah, just tighten things up on the discipline category. Otherwise, you know, they're a very even team to this Colorado team. But, you know, once, once you start letting those eight meter shots go, Colorado's gonna make you pay for that. So the Buffs lead the Utes at the end of the first half, five to one, the number one team on the ropes here in Boulder. The home team trying to win the RMWLL tournament. 30 minutes down, they got 30 minutes left. We'll be right back on Scobuff Sports.
Welcome back everyone to the CU Athletic Fields behind beautiful Folsom Field in Boulder, Colorado. We're here for the RMWLL championship game between the Colorado Buffaloes and the Utah Utes. It's a 5-1 game in favor of the Buffaloes, outscoring the Utes 5-0 in that second quarter to get them to this 5-1 lead. 30 minutes to go. C will be making a goalie change. Anna Klein out. Played a very, very good first half. Elena McCloskey heading out to defend CU's net now. And McCloskey is a familiar name with the uh, with the streams. And I remember I, that name is familiar to me. McCloskey playing in net here in the second half. She's also on the club women's hockey team here at CU. Yeah, and McCloskey's going to be an interesting case because, you know, every time there's a goalie change, you want to know, you know, what's going to happen, what's the effect, because, you know, there's a good goalie, and then there's just, you know, different uh, types of goalies. So it's going to be interesting to see how McCloskey plays and defends that CU lead as we start early here in CU's defensive zone. So we're going to get an early advantage here, one minute, for the Utes, which is exactly what they need. And as I said at the half, they need to stay out of that penalty box, which, well, for the first minute they have. They won't quite start at the 12-meter line, but it won't be a 12-meter shot. It will just be a start to play around that mark. Here's Allen moving in, and McCloskey cannot make the stop. Utah's back on the board. a beautiful shot there extended the stick right there and went right down below and that's a very dangerous spot if you're a if you're a goalie anywhere so you expect them to kind of go up high when they raise that stick like that but just slams it on the ground and gets it past McCloskey and now we've got a three goal game Allen with her second goal of the afternoon has both tallies for this youth squad yeah, very consistent. If no one else is clicking on that Utes team, you know she is. So, got the two goals and expect her to be producing a lot more. A lot Utah more. Utah will win the draw. Pass a little off the mark, but corralled there by Grace Mazalewski. Utah bench is right back into this game right now, as Generazzo has it. Trying to pass it down low for Carey. It's going towards out of bounds. Scooped up by Colorado. Collar has it. Gets the pass up to Luce. See you reversing course. Luce riding the sideline across midfield. Luce still has it. Here's Grotta. And they're going to stop the clock here. going to have a penalty against Utah assessed and an advantage for Colorado. So right after Utah scores on the advantage, CU has an opportunity. They'll start play all along the near side. It's Rhymes. Get over to Kreibel. Setting pass in front. Off the mark. Utah able to scoop it up. And they're looking to clear now. And it looks like another penalty coming up. And it's going to be a yellow card. It's going to be a two-minute penalty against Colorado. It's going to be against Ditzler. See, a bit of a, a th uh, 180, not 360, 180 here for the use is we're going to get two people off. And yeah, just going to see how this one plays out. So Utah hasn't been as punishing as Colorado when it comes to being on the advantage, but you can't just count them. I mean, anything could happen, especially when you're in the second leg and you're facing, uh, well, facing a three-goal deficit. Here's Allen. 
Allen moving right in, and McCluskey makes a big save. And now the advantage has been killed for Utah. So now they can get on the advantage and see how they see how they can respond here. As Colorado starts that advantage with possession, however. So about a minute left on the advantage here for Utah. I think kill off everything. Gaylor giving it to Grata. I see you is on the offensive right now. Gaylord in the corner, looking for an outlet pass. Still has control along the near sideline. Gets it to the middle of the field, finds Kreibel, slows it down a little bit. Kreibel. Looking, pass back. Now here's Luce. Grata. Back up top to Kreibel, they kill the advantage. Grata, trying to find that second pass to Kreibel, it's deflected off the stick of low. Gaylord picks it up, keeps possession for Colorado. Not a lot of shots for rebound from this Buffs team, but that one almost paid off there. You saw the scramble in front, and unfortunately there was no Buffs to kind of come in and capitalize on that. Gwendolyn Gaylord on the far side. Finds McCarville. Fakes a flip to Grotta. Now flips it off to Annika Ditzler. Ditzler, back up to Luce. Luce still has possession. Trying to shoot one, it's deflected away by the stick and of a youth defender and they're gonna take possession. They cleared away to Mazalewski. Grace Mazalewski lose control. Beautiful. And now Haley Rimes takes it the other way for Colorado. I, think, I don't know if you saw it, Alex. That was a beautiful stick lift right there. Just kind of tapped the stick and jostled it out of that net. So just a great job in using the stick there. And you can see how aggressive Colorado is starting to get in transition. Utah able to steal possession back after a missed pass from Colorado. We're going to try and cut this lead down to two. McKenna Minock. Back to Langwin. Down to Carey. Carey. Waits looking, scores! Talk about a hard angle shot. It does not get harder than that. I mean, she had maybe like three degrees on that net to get it in. Very so. tight shot, just walked right in and saw she could shoot, puts it through. Yeah, McCloskey was definitely not expecting that. I mean, this is a Utah team that they don't really try to wrap around, they just try to get it out uh, in front, so. You know, when you have that, we have a pass first team suddenly just shooting on net like that, it's gonna catch your, your defenders and more importantly, your goalie off guard, and now they cut into that lead even more. It's 5-3 now. Nine twenty-six to go in the third quarter. Utah has scored the last two goals to cut the lead down to two. And off the faceoff, a foul committed. Off the draw by Colorado, Utah will take control now. This is Lucy Pritchard. And to pass there to Sage. Now heads back for defense. Allen to the grief. Grace to grief. 
Pass in front looking for Minock. Minox now has it. Gets it to Allen. Allen scooting in, walking right in, loses control of the ball, and a foul committed by Colorado. It's going to be an eight meter shot for Allen, who's looking for the hat trick. Of course, if she did not score that third goal for Utah, I could not pick up who actually scored it. My gut tells me it was either Allen or Sage, so she either has the hat trick or is shooting for the hat trick right now. Allen scores. Well, she didn't have it then, Alice. She has it now. Yeah. Naya Allen has scored three or four or all four for Utah. She's crossed 30 goals for the season as the Buffs are forced to take a timeout as their lead has shrunk down to one. And so while they discuss things over the break, we're gonna take a short break here on School Bus Sports. Don't go away. Well, quick timeout called right there, and definitely, definitely needed for both teams here. I think, you know, I, I didn't see who called the timeout, but I could see why both teams have that motivation too. See who called the timeout. Yeah. So I mean, for CU, you know, kind of starting to lose grip on that lead, and now looking at one. But for Utah, it's going to be about how can we regroup after that goal and keep it going. So a lot to be proud of so far. Of course, Allen has that hat trick, maybe, maybe four goals, and it's going to be about. One team trying to preserve the lead, and the other just trying to attack at it right there with the time that they have left. Nia Allen, the leading scorer for Utah, crossed 30 goals today on the season. And a foul, false start committed by Colorado. It's going to be a... Utah's going to have a possession. Delay of game penalty, I believe, being called. It's a one-minute penalty. And that is the second foul, by the way, committed in a row by the person taking a draw for CU. So now they look at themselves with the disadvantage and amazing opportunity right now handed to the Ute for the Utes. See if they can capitalize. Looking to tie the game. Sage. On to pass to Langwin. Now Allen back to Langwin. Minock. Looking to move around Conjoyan. Minock in front. Johnson stopped by McCloskey. Big stop by the CU goaltender. Delaney Conjoyan now the other way. 30 seconds left on the Utah advantage. Conjoyan. Now Halt slows things down, leaves for Ava Logan. Fakes a shot around the 8 meter mark. Backs up, now sits at the 12 meter mark. Conjoyan. Over to loose. Looking at eight seconds to go on that penalty. And Colorado still has possession, so it looks like it's going to be a kill here on that penalty for CU. Here's Logan. Gwendolyn Gaylord back out there for the buffs. Loose. Finds Gaylord. Down to Ditzler. Finds pass to Grotta, fakes the centering pass, now passes to Ditzler, shoots one, and she scores! What a pass from Lindsey Grotta, and what an adjustment from Annika Ditzler. The Buffs regain a multi-goal lead. 
Yeah, there's no other way to put it. That was just a defensive breakdown right there. You could see Utah kind of playing the angle and not the player. And, you know, while that's good for those quick, you know, snapshots on net, all you got to do is pass it and have somebody, I don't know, stand a foot to the right and get around that. So, you know, Utah had that plan, but didn't really expect to see that pass. And as I said, all you got to do is kind of just move around that box and you're going to get an easy look. And Utah simply was not ready for that. So loose in there for the draw for Colorado. As they've broken, they've finally answered Utah after them scoring three in a row. They answer the call and have a two goal lead once again. Off the draw, loose trying to take possession. It bounces on the turf a couple times and it's scooped up by Lila Sage. 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 And now a stoppage called. That's going to be offside by the looks of it. Yeah, yeah offside offsides against the Buffs. I was going to say Sage. I mean, for that Utah team, we don't say her name enough. I mean, she's been doing a great job starting those breaks. And a lot of these goals that you see, all four of them, I believe, for Utah coming off those breakaways, Sage has a huge part in all of them, except for the, <laughs> of course, for the, uh, the eight meter shot goal for the Utes. Sage has been a huge role player for Utah, looking to get more involved. Allen finds a pass to Minock, back to Allen. Allen, Minock, does not shoot there, gives it back to Allen. DeGrief, and a shooting space called against Colorado. So it's going to be an eight meter shot for DeGrief. Grace DeGrief scores. And Utah's cut the lead back down to one. Grace DeGrief. Yeah, I was about to say, I mean, if that eight meter shot didn't happen, I think McCloskey was getting a little jumpy and you really can't blame her when, <laughs> you know, you have at, at a given moment four or five people that can put it on net and that's never a good thing when, you're, when your defense is allowing that kind of situation. So they got to contain those passing lanes and you can't really do a lot on the eight meter as a defense, but, you know, right there you just saw that breakdown where they were just letting Utah pass wherever they wanted. And the number one team has fought their way back into this ball game. It's a one goal game. Loose back in there for the draw. And Abby Loose wins it cleanly for Colorado. Now races up the near sideline. Knifes through two Utah defenders, loses the ball. It's still on the ground. They're still fighting for it. Loose trying to scoop it up. Three buffs over there and it's scooped up by Mazalewski for Utah. Nia Allen looking for more, and that one misses the net. Going to be a penalty in course on Utah. It's going to be against Allen, and this is huge. Take your best, take the best score for the opposition out. The bus will go to the advantage for two minutes. Yeah, this advantage is, you know, it. <laughs> I don't know, you know, it. It is an advantage, but it feels more so because that's one of their best players being taken out. So. We hear that, right, right, uh, Alex? So non-releasable penalty here, so it looks like regardless of if CU scores, I'll have to kill the full two minutes. McCloskey, now up to Lorenzen. Megan Lorenzen along the far sideline, guarded by two Ute defenders. Walking the sideline and she stepped out of bounds. Yeah, it looks like her teammate and both Utah defenders recognize that. They didn't even bother following her, so now Utah gets to regroup and try and start on their own. McKenna Minock. 
Back, here's the pass to Catherine Eli. Eli along the near side. Around midfield, throws it away. Annika Dissler trying to scoop it up. Still on the turf. It's still on the turf. And Utah's able to take possession. Near disaster for the Utes, but they're able to recover. Stop the clock here. About 30 seconds to go on the advantage for Colorado. Sage has it for Utah. And they're going to stop the clock again. Penalty like coming up against the Buffaloes. Another player being sent off, looks of it. So now another 180. Great chance for Utah right now to start sending their own and <laughs> staring in the face of a one goal deficit. They can definitely get something going here and tie that game up. And a penalty called against Utah. Time running out on the advantage. You know, Alice, you know, we can say what we want about this camera angle, but the the thing that's helped us out is hearing who's screaming from either bench when something happens. It kind of helps us gather who, uh, who benefited. That eight meter shot hits the post. Just that close from a tie game. Yeah, and Colorado really feels uncomfortable right now. You think any of these can go past right now with the way that this has been going. That one also hits the post. Still loose on the turf. Both teams fighting for it. It rolls out towards the defenders. Kreibel now shoves a you down and they will take possession. DeGrief passes to Minock. McKenna Minock into Sage. Loses the ball and it's going to be a... Eight meter shot for Lila Sage. Well, you said earlier, trying to get more uh, more production here, so golden opportunity to do it right here, right down the barrel. Sage stopped by McCloskey. Yeah, every single possession right here, every single shot, eight meter shot is gonna matter huge right now, so. Right there, we could look back on that save as you know maybe the one of the most integral parts, and we got a long stretch of lacrosse left to play. McCloskey just holding on to the ball here. Again, there is no shot clock in women's lacrosse; they can hold on to it as long as they can. Collar up to Conjoyan. Conjoyan holds in the offensive zone, and they'll stop the clock. Offsides against the Buffaloes. My point stands, Alex. That's the only reason I knew it was them, because now Utah's bench is screaming. So it's uh, kind of an indicator for us. Low, pressured, flips it across the field, gets it to a friendly white jersey, Amanda Walker. Advantage killed off by Colorado. Sage, trying to flip it back, gets it to Langwin. Minock down behind the Buffalo net. One minute to go in this third quarter. Ball, the pass off the mark, and Elena McCloskey will grab it, gets it out. To Chase Kreibel, finds Collar on the near sideline. 
Finds an open Conjoyan. Delaney Conjoyan, cross midfield. Up to Evan McDonald. Here's Ava Diamond now. Diamond, moving around a defender, looking for a shot. Diamond has to back off. And we'll stop the clock with 32 seconds to go in this third quarter. Looks like they're gonna call an eight meter shot right here for the Buffaloes and, and a penalty enforced on Utah. So going to the advantage here and depending on how things go, they might enter the quarter with one. It's an eight meter shot here for Ava Diamond to try and get the Buffs a two goal lead. Diamond scores! The two goal lead is restored for Colorado, Ava Diamond with her first of the game. Well, Buff fans can take a breath. Not too big a one, because we got a whole quarter left to play, but you know, a two goal pad definitely helps when I've never seen a lacrosse score this low, you know, in the games that we've seen. So, you know, every goal is going to matter here, and that two goal de uh, deficit for Utah is going to be huge going into that fourth quarter, barring anything in the next 30 seconds. Which, now that I said that, probably is something going to happen. <laughs> Does the announcer jinx play its part at the end of this third quarter? 30 seconds to go. Kreibel scoops it up off the off the draw. Kreibel trying to race in. Kreibel finds Diamond right in front. Just barely missed the net. Buffs will keep possession though. Yeah, what 15 a, seconds to go. What a story that would have been if Diamond could have gotten that second goal going. Diamond has it right now, looking for it now, and misses it again. I should just not say anything. <laughs> Provided these uh, announcer jinxes. Time will run out in the third quarter. The Buffs. Almost pick up another one to get a three goal lead heading to the fourth. It's a very, very interesting match. Pretty even through this third quarter. Two goals for Colorado, four for Utah. They've cut the lead down to two. Yeah, no, absolutely, Alex. And it's going to mean everything going into the uh, fourth quarter. And that two goal deficit is nothing for this Utah team. And for Colorado, it's the same kind of thing where you're just trying to play that mentality that if you let in one, you're probably going to let in the other just with the way this has been playing. So I think the biggest story is just going to be forcing uncomfortable looks and denying those passing lanes. The offensive generation, it doesn't really matter at this point if you can keep them out of the scoring category. And so the Buffs lead the Utes 7-5 at the end of the third quarter. Championship on the line, one quarter to go. We'll be right back. Welcome back to Boulder, Colorado for the fourth and likely final quarter of this RMWLL championship game between the Colorado Buffaloes and the Utah Utes. 
Utah finishing the regular season the number one team in the conference. Colorado placed third, the only team to beat Utah in the regular season, at least in conference play. And they're looking to make it 2-2 -two this season to win the title. Yeah, but don't hold that Utah out of it. I mean, that you know that four-goal production and, you know, CU was able to pad it, but without that, this game would be tied up right now. So Utah can very easily score, and that kind of comes second nature when you've got a really good team like Utah. So CU has a minute, nearly a minute and a half of an advantage to start the fourth quarter. On an unreleasable penalty, Logan scores! And as you just said, non-releasable, so that advantage is going to stay after padding that to a three-goal cushion. Ava Logan gets her second of the game. It's 8-5. So Ava Logan who just scored her second in the draw, in the circle for the draw for the Buffaloes. And there's a fight for it. As per usual, Jada Johnson has it for Utah. Johnson. Eight meters shot coming up for Minock. Backs up, spins, and the save is made by Elena McCloskey. Now let's start with something different here for uh, for Colorado, and who's not to say they can get another pad? So still got the advantage, and that advantage for time. another ten seconds. Plenty of time to get a look here, especially in this kind of situation. Three, two, one. Penalty time's up. Penelope Riley has possession for the Buffaloes. Finds Grotta. Pass in front. They score! Elizabeth Rogenbauer with the tally. It's 9-5, and the vision from Lindsey Grotta strikes again. Nothing to it. I mean, they've just been, they've really found their rhythm, and that's really what's hurt in Utah. I mean, they were lucky that Colorado didn't have the offensive prowess to kind of capitalize, but they, they definitely woken up in that department, and Utah just hasn't been able to keep up so far. Two goals here in the first two minutes of this fourth quarter. Rogan Bauer getting her first goal of the season right there. Huge goal for Rogan Bauer. That's, this is the time you want to pick up your first goal of the year. Yeah, I mean, your, your team needs that so desperately, and you can't feel comfortable until, yeah, it's about a four or five goal lead. So Colorado can kind of take a breath, but you can't let up anything now from here on out. Logan slips, foul committed by Utah. Buffs will take possession, and they'll stop the clock. Going to be a penalty enforced against Utah, which is the opposite Again. of what they need right now. And now while we had that stoppage, I believe 13 on Utah, of course, one of their best scorers, is disqualified. Kind of like a foul out situation in basketball. Yeah, and that's huge for Utah. Huge blow. Their top scorer, Nia Allen, might have been disqualified. It was in the early part of the uh, third quarter, too, so that's a long time without your best goal scorer, and that may decide the uh, the game not having your your star scorer. Ava Logan has a hat trick! Another great pass in front of the net, and Ava Logan scores three. The Buffs are in double digits. And timeout called for Utah. They're definitely gonna wanna talk some things over. And this is lacrosse, anything's possible. 
you know, a five goal lead, that, that, that's nothing in this sport, so. It is women's lacrosse. No shot clock means CU can take all the time they want at this point in the game now to just kill the clock. They could hold it for another three minutes and Utah doesn't even get to touch the ball again. Yeah, I mean. So it is imperative that Utah wins these draws, able to capitalize and continue to get possessions. They cannot let CU just milk the clock here. Yeah, that's, that's precisely why. I mean, there's really not much you can say in the scoring aspect, but it's going to be about possession, a lot of it. So it's about getting those rebounds. And if you shoot it, you better be ready to go get it because if Colorado gets that off the rebound, you know, that could be a minute or two being taken off the clock. So, but you need to be perfect for the next 12 minutes or 13 minutes that we've got left. Just under 13 minutes. Just under 13 minutes, yeah. It's going to be an important, it, it is coming down to the wire here. CU's in control. Utah is down for the count. Number yeah. one team on the ropes. And, and you really can't discount how crucial it is that they're missing their best player in Allen. I mean, I think you said they had 40 or 30 goals. Over which, 30. They crossed 30 today. And you have Colorado where, you know, their scores are a lot more spaced, where it's a lot evenly distributed for their efficiency. It kind of feels like Utah runs through, you know, a handful of their players. So if you lose one, that is crucial. So Utah's got to just pick it up and not even think about not having their best score and kind of space out the distribution and see who can pick up her place and figure that out quick. Just under 13 minutes to go in the game. Utah needs five goals to tie. And once again, they're out without their top score. Forty-two seconds on the advantage for the Buffaloes. Loose takes control. Advantages cut off with the goal by Logan. Here's Rhyme shooting one. Save made by Lowe. Good save there. That was a very packed shooting lane. So good job being able to see through, I think, two or three bodies in front and make the save where it was needed. Cribal. That's Haley Rhymes on the pass to Gaylord. Alexandra McCarvel. Passing over to Grotta. Back up top to Rhymes. Rhymes. Thought about charging that, backs off. Hands off to Abby Luce. Luce, around the side, fakes a shot. Now goes back behind the net to Lindsey Grotta. Grotta fakes a pass. Now gets it to Rhymes. Rhymes, in front finds Kreibel. Big stop by low. But then another problem, CU gets right back with that rebound and possession needs to be the most important thing here. So you need to be a little bit more aware and trying to get that possession back because Colorado will make you pay for that. Grotta, back to Kreibel. Kreibel, looking. Backs off for a second, tries to drop a play here. Leaves for Rhymes. Haley Rhymes walks right in, and the shot is missed. See you, gonna try and chase it down. It's gonna go out, not at the end line. And it does go out at the end line. See you, takes control. Yeah, that caught the cradle. And keeps control. Not the net, but the cradle, so good heads up. You know, been doing a really good job defending up top, that goalkeeper. Grotta in front, swarmed by four youth defenders, able to get away and protect the stick. Protect the ball. Monica Ditzler behind the net. Finds McDonald. Back to Ditzler. Looking for an outlet. Had Gaylord cutting across. Decides to go up top to Abby Luce. Luce down low. McCarvel. 
Fakes a flip to Grada, now hands it back to Grada. Rhymes, right in. That one shot over the net. And see you closer to the ball, they keep possession. And they're just milking the clock right now. They've killed about three minutes. Yeah, and Utah's not really challenging that either. I mean, not trying to get those takeaways that we kind of saw CU trying to do early in the third quarter. Loose, makes a nice move. And save made by Lowe. Right in there, right at the goal line, and Utah is able to finally get a stop. Yeah, that one almost rolled into the net. That was how close that was. Nearly picked off by Luce, a, a leaping attempt to steal possession back, but the Utes now move up the other way with Lila Sage. Sage, moving around one defender. Pass in front, they get that in front. Hit the crossbar! And now Kreibel has it for CU. Grotta's wide open, has a ton of room. Now the lead pass ahead. Wide open, McCarville, score! No, what no. a save, oh my goodness. Big stop by Olivia Lowe. That is huge, stopping <laughs> the breakaway chance. You were completely and that's subscribed. I was, I was totally ready for that one to go in the back of the net. Olivia Lowe keeping Utah in this game. Yeah, and what a beautiful way to stop that. What a breakdown by the defense though, but just amazing save there by the goalie. And that's why you thank your goaltender for those kind of breakdowns. I mean, <laughs> there was nobody there. And Colorado Bouncing got the easy breakaway. Floating in the CU offensive zone. Ditzler has it. No one's covering. Ditzler shoots. And now a foul called. Yeah, you can see how far upfield Utah is playing right now. It's desperation mode right now. Eight meter shot coming up for Annika Ditzler. Looking to potentially put this one out of reach. Ditzler scores! No doubt about that one. I mean, you, you see the confidence that they had right there. And 11 goals, that's a lot to be put past a goalie. And, you know, playing that full 60 or however many minutes, that, that's just how it's been where Colorado looks like the more comfortable team, and sometimes that's, that's exactly what it takes. You know, not, you know, intangibles or anything like that, but simply how confident are you getting those shots down? You're going to get a full rotation for the buffs in the meantime, full substitutions. So the buffs in the driver's seat. Up by six with eight minutes to go. The number one team in the RMWLL on the ropes. Colorado looking to beat them for the second time this season and win the conference championship in the process. Ball bouncing off the draw. Utah trying to scoop it up. Here comes Casey. Carey trying to shoot it on. It goes over the net. Looks like a stick deflection with one and of those keepers. And CU will defenders. get possession. Madeline Cloud will scoop it up and start play for the buffs. Speaking of cloud, we got one more preventing that sun from coming out. And I mean, the clouds just kind of came out today, and they just kind of hovered over the athletic fields all morning and afternoon long. Yeah, shading us and the team from having that brutal sun from, I think we'd see a very different game if we went for this uh, cool, cooler temperature. Gets that pass up. It's going to be a card enforced. Now a penalty. Donica, Donica Smith. The ball carrier there, drawing the penalty. So yeah, that'll be a two minute enforced penalty. Non-releasable, by the way, so. That, by the time that this is over, no matter what, that's going to be five minutes and 15 to go. So if that goal wasn't the nail in the coffin, an unreleasable two-minute penalty may have been. So that is the end of the day for Mason Carey. Carey's also been ejected, so and disqualified. Yeah, kind of unfortunate there, but with the volume of penalties we've seen from Utah, that's kind of been the name of today's game. Here's Logan. 
Finds Ava Diamond. And now it's Anna Holstein. Back to Diamond. Logan, along the far side, moving with the ball. Finds a pass in front to McDonald, fakes the shot. Loses control of the ball. Logan chasing it down, scooping it up. Try to stay inbounds and does. Finds a pass to Rogan Bauer. Diamond, along the near side. Centering pass. Off the mark, Logan scoops it up, keeps possession for Colorado. Conjoin to McDonald. Diamond finds Rogan Bauer. Now Logan back to McDonald. Defense doing a good job for not letting any passes or shots, excuse me, but. Under six minutes to go in this championship game. Diamond. McDonald in front looking for Rogan Bauer. And it's off the mark. Buffs will turn it over. Utah takes control. And 20 the, seconds on the advantage. About to, yeah, end too. So starting off with that possession is huge here for trying to get something going. Sage. Advantage has been killed off. Minock looking for a shot. Passes it away to Langwin. Hillary Curd behind the Buffalo net. Moving in, backs up, sits at the 12 meter line. It's a pass down low. Trying for the wraparound in front. Sage couldn't grab it. Connor can't hold on to it. Now does. And CU is going to take possession back once again. Minock steals it back for Utah. They're still alive. Four and a half minutes to go. Legwind. Losing it still on the turf. And they'll just roll it back to Elena McCloskey, who will hold on to the ball and look for an outlet pass. Approaching the four minute mark with the Buffs leading by six. And she just rolls it out. On the opposite and side. And Cloud rolls it back to McCloskey. Almost bad miscommunication there. I thought Utah might have picked that up there. Collar open, has trouble handling the pass. Now takes control, running up the near sideline. Margaret Collar up to Diamond, has it stripped away from her. Ball still on the turf. And scooped up by Evan McDonald. McDonald looking for a pass, finds Logan. Under three and a half to go. Logan, looking for a pass. Still sitting on the far side. Now behind the Utah net is McDonald. Holstein has it stripped away by Sage. Good pick play, three minutes to go. Lob pass hits up to Riley Freeman. Freeman. Finds a pass there to Lucy Pritchard. Pritchard. Now to Mikkel Cook. Cook oh, shoots and God. scores. It's not over yet. No, it's not. And there's a reason that team's number one. So you cannot mess around at this point. And you got to milk every second you can. Because if you don't, Utah will take every one and make the most of it. 11-6 lead for the Buffaloes with 2.40 to play. Two forty-two to play. At this point, it's imperative that Utah wins this draw.
And off the draw. Floating in the Colorado offensive zone. Rhymes had it and will continue to have it. Good work on the draw from Emma Regard. Who's out there for the Buffaloes? Penelope Riley. Over to McCarville. Down low behind the net, looking for Grodd. It rolls on the ground and scooped up by the Utes. Trying to get that back to low. Stolen away. McCarville can't put it in. Couple chances from McCarville late in this game with an open net, a one-on-one -on -one chance with the goaltender and has not been able to put it through. Yeah, intercepted that pass with the goalie coming out and that could have been a really good look there. And she wants her chance, she wants that chance back, definitely. Pritchard moves up field for the Utes. Langwin on the far side. Finds a pass. They'll move it around. Minock. McKenna Minock still has it. Looking for that lead pass in front. It's still loose on the turf. And almost scooped up there by Mancini. And they're gonna stop time here with 114 to play. And it looks like we're gonna have an eight meter shot. Mikkel Cook. Scores! It's her second of the game. That game's not over, Alex, and I don't know, I've seen a lot of multi-goal leads be a race, so I won't feel comfortable, well, I won't feel comfortable with, you know, saying anything about who's gonna win until that clock hits zero, because Utah is clearly not out of this, and even if they're staring a minute, 10 in the face. Timeout, Colorado. Utah is not going away, but it still is a four goal lead. They only have a minute 12 left to try and tie this game. And while I would agree with you, I'm not super comfortable with the lead. I'm very comfortable if I'm Colorado right now with a four goal lead. Uh, unless Utah is able to win pretty much every single draw and score quickly on every single possession, I think time, there isn't enough time for Utah to come back in this game. But stranger things have happened in sports. Can't count them out completely yet, but uh, I can tell you with a high degree of certainty, once the Buffs went 11-6 with about 13 minutes to go, that win percentage on ESPN, if this was a game you'd be watching on ESPN, that win percentage meter is probably up to 99%. Yeah, absolutely, but there's a reason they, they called that timeout, so just need to do your job and not make any mistakes here and finish that shut game it down. Out. Yeah, absolutely. They know it's not quite over yet, but they know the clock is on their side. They can grab possession pretty much even once. I think they probably finish it off. So huge moment, huge draw coming up. Every draw from here on out, if this is the, if this is, if this isn't the last one, is huge. Now Utah does have one more timeout, so if anything does happen, they will be able to control that pace at least. One twelve to go in the game. Utah faces a four goal deficit as the number one team in the RMWLL. Utah possession. Utah's going to get possession. They got a long ways to go. Approaching one minute. One minute to go in the RML, RMWLL championship game. The number one team on the ropes. Lila Sage. Moves right in, and now they're going to stop the clock with a with 48 seconds to go. Going to be so a green sides. card. It's going to be an advantage for Utah. Exactly what they want right now. <laughs> 48 seconds to play. Sage has the pass blocked by Chase Kreibel. She scoops it up and takes it the other way for the Colorado Buffaloes. That'll effectively do it. Kreibel knows the situation. Finds Grata. 30 seconds to go until the Buffaloes are crowned champions. 
Ditzler. Killing the clock. 20 seconds. Grotta could not handle the ball. Bats it back in. Out of bounds. Little time to go. 10 seconds. Grotta takes possession, hands it off. And the Colorado Buffaloes are RMWLL champions. Let's they win it. two games against Utah this season. The number one team taken down in the title game by the only team that beat them in the regular season. Yeah, there's no other way to put it. It's been a very, very interesting game and very fun to watch and you know discuss. And you know, at the start, things looked very different. Where you had that 1-0 deficit, where very high defensive performance, very tight around the edges, and then everything kind of unraveled. So. If I were to say what made the difference for Utah lo losing, it would absolutely just be the penalties. And you had two of your maybe best players go off and be disqualified. One of them for almost half the game. Not not to mention you know the penalty shots and the advantages that CU was given and taken advantage of. I I definitely think a lot of this was the discipline that Utah kind of lost against this formidable Colorado Buffaloes team. The Buffaloes came into the tournament as the three seed. Beat Utah Valley by three goals yesterday to get into this championship game. They win by four, and they're champions of the RMWLL. As the good game line begins, that'll do it for us here at Scobuff Sports. We hope you have enjoyed this broadcast. For Nick Evans, I'm Alex Roberts saying so long from Colorado. The Buffaloes win the RMWLL Championship. You heard it here first on Scobo Sports.